Whew. Hello everyone again. It's Ryan from Dark Winter Moon and I just got finished moving and so I'm sorry for not recording a video last week, but if any of you have ever moved, you know what I mean. So as some of you might have seen, I've been going through a lot of transitions. One of them is that I've been starting to develop myself as a spiritual and magical witchy life coach. And so that's what I do. That's what I want to do. I want to help people just like you find their best magical practice and path and ultimately their deity and their guides. So that's why I do this. That's why I created this channel so that I can help folks. And as promised, now we're going to do a deep dive into the charge of the goddess and what it means to me, how it has influenced my entire magical craft and development since the late 90s. Can you believe it? I've been a witch for over 20 years. <laughs> so, but before we get started, I have a quick PSA from my assistant Ryan, and then we'll get into it. Hello, all ye lovely witches and seekers. Let's talk real quick about the community that I'm wanting to build. We already have great seeds planted with my YouTube channel, my Instagram, some of the questions I get on my website, but I want to bring it all together. And I want to do it in a way that's organic and where we're all learning and teaching and commenting and talking together, while at the same time providing me a way to keep doing this for you all and with you all. And so I have just la launched or relaunched my Patreon with a, with a whole bunch of new tiers and freebies and giveaways and discounts. The really cool thing too, though, is that in the process of launching my Patreon, I have also created a Discord server. So now we have a space where we can all come together and we can talk about sigil craft and magic and connecting with deities and the tarot and divination and really anything in the spiritual and witchcraft realm that we want. So please connect with me on Patreon. It's Patreon slash Dark Winter Moon and take a look at what I've got to offer there. And that way you can get access to my Discord and we can have some of these great conversations and we can continue to build this great community. So again, thank you all so much for your support. I'm excited to see where this goes and how we grow together. And so blessed be. Mwah. Love you all. Thank you so much, Ryan. So I know some of you have seen it, but I'll show it again. This is my Book of Shadows. As you can probably see, it's well loved and well used. I've been working on this since not long after I started Witchcraft, early 2000s. Um, one of the first things I put into it was the Charge of the Goddess. The first time I read the Charge of the Goddess, it was very moving to me. It was like, oh my gods, I already believe a lot of this. This is a great guideline for someone that is seeking an alternative spirituality, especially if you grew up in any sort of Christian or Abrahamic tradition. What is a Book of Shadows? Book of Shadows simply means Book of Secrets. So it is the collection of your magical experiences, your magical works, any of your thoughts. To me, it's like a magical journal. It's like a dream journal. It's a little bit of everything. And it includes all of the my experiences or many of my experiences in the craft, whatever they may be. And so I thought it very appropriate to start out my Book of Shadows with the Charge of the Goddess. So what is the Charge of the Goddess? For those of you that may not know or may not have heard of it, it is traditionally used, I believe, in Crowling Witchcraft to draw down the moon. It's often read as the priestess is bringing the goddess into her herself and speaking on behalf of the goddess to the coveners. And um, it is as if it's written from the perspective of the goddess speaking to us. So there are lots of kernels and nuggets of wisdom in it that have influenced me and that I would like to share with you and get my thoughts and feelings on. So how about we start at the beginning and break it down. So I'll just read and then we'll talk about it. So first few lines. These are the words of the goddess. Whenever you have need of anything and once in a month and better it be when the moon is full, then shall you assemble in a magical place and adore the spirit of me, who am queen of all witches. There shall ye assemble, ye who are fain to learn all witchery, yet have not won its deepest secrets. To these will be thought and taught things that are yet unknown. So 
another thing I didn't say is the charge comes in many, many different versions. I love this one because it's more formal, but there's no reason that you have to have a, this formal of a charge. There are many other versions that are less formal if that suits you. There are versions that are more formal if that suits you. So keep that in mind. So let's kind of break this down. So literally this says to me, whenever ye have need of anything and once in a month and better it be when the moon is full. The goddess is saying to us that we don't, we can come to her anytime we need, whether it's on the full moon or it's not, she's always available to us. But better it be when the moon is full. The moon is sacred to her and it's the, the full moon is her time. So if you really want to connect with her and her power and wisdom, the full moon is a great time to do so. Better it be with other folks. And generally I have, my experience in the craft is working solo is great, working with two people is great, but when you have three or more, the magic really starts to happen in a very deep and meaningful way in community. And I believe that that is what the goddess is meaning here, is that come before me under the moonlight with others of like heart and mind, and I will teach you my wisdom. And the word feign in this sense, she says, there shall ye assemble ye who are fain to learn our witchery. So fain pretty much means you desire to learn our witchery. So for me, that's always been this burning questing knowledge to learn witchcraft, to learn the ways of the land and of magic and of personal power. And the goddess promises us that if we come together with others of like mind under the moonlight, then she will share her wisdom with us. So let's see, is there anything else? Yeah, she literally says, you who are fain to learn our witchery, but have not worn its deepest, deepest secrets. To these will be thought and taught things that are yet unknown. So here she's talking about the mysteries that are available to us if we come before her. And I think that's so exciting. <laughs> and it always has been. It's always like, ooh, what is going to be next? Every single circle, even when I've felt down or felt too lazy or unmotivated to do a circle, I've always gotten something deep and meaningful and powerful and wise out of it. All right, so let's move on to the next line. Ye shall be free from bondage. Ye shall dance, sing, feast, make music, and love all in my praise. For mine is the ecstasy of the spirit, and mine is also joy on earth, for my law is love unto all beings. So this, to me, I, I, I've probably alluded to this. I grew up in a very conservative Christian environment, and even to the extent that sometimes it, it wasn't okay to celebrate and enjoy the human experience. You had to be solemn. And even when you were celebrating, it was always in the context of what deity wanted, what God Yahweh wanted, and what his rules were for us. And what this says to me is that you shall be free from bondage. You shall be free. You shall dance, sing, feast, make music, and love all in my praise. And for mine is the ecstasy of spirit, and mine is also joy on earth. For my law is love in all beings. She's telling us that these acts of celebration and community are worshipful to herself. We're worshiping with her, not to her. She doesn't stand above us, she stands with us. And so that, that to me is so powerful. And it, it drew me even further towards witchcraft and away from traditional religion. And then it also says, keep pure your highest ideals. Strive ever toward them. Let not stop you or turn you aside. So I wanna take just that phrase because I think it's so important. She's telling us that whatever your dreams are, whatever your highest ideals are for yourself in the world, don't ever give up stretching towards those, moving towards those. And this phrase in particular has always encouraged me to work to better myself as a person and to try to help others in any way that I can. And this seems like the reason that I am here now speaking to you, that my ideal is that witchcraft is this beautiful, transformative, wonderful self-development practice where you're literally crafting yourself as a wise person. And I believe that 
so many folks out there can benefit from that ideal of of self-development, growth, and emp personal empowerment. So then she says, for mine is the secret door which opens up on the land of youth, and mine is the cup of the wine of life and the cauldron of Keridwin, which is the holy grail of immortality. So here it gets a little more esoteric and mysterious, but let's put it in context with keep pure your highest idea deals. So for mine is the secret door which opens up on the land of youth. I think what she's saying is she's talking about immortality in the sense of reincarnation, that we are our lives on this earth right now are but part of a greater cycle of many lives that we live and also that there's no fear of death for hers is the cup of the wine of life and it also goes back to that celebratory experience of of life of celebrating life of eat drink and be merry of be in community love enjoy not only the spirit but the flesh for these are youthful things, and no matter how old you are or how many lifetimes you've lived, maintaining that youthful spirit in whatever you do is such a powerful thing. And also here, I put stress on mine is the secret door. It's a mystery. And this brings me to a point about the charge of the goddess and witchcraft in general. It is a mystery religion, and literally what that means is that there are things that can only be experienced when you are doing magic or when you're in circle with others in community. That cannot be written down, that cannot be conveyed. You have to do and practice witchcraft in order to understand it because it is literally an experiential practice. It is a visceral practice. What do I mean that, by that? So in circle, many times, you'll feel a, a change within you, a body change, a sensation that is different, is new, is unique. And you can't really describe that and convey it. You just have to be there and feel it. And those are transformative things. Um, and I wish I could convey to you exactly what I'm talking about, but the what I mean is witchcraft is a religion of doing, not standing back and allowing other folks to tell you what to do. And there are many secrets in the craft, like Book of Shadows is Book of Secrets. It's a mystery. It's experiential. So let's move on. I am the gracious goddess who gives the gift of joy unto the hearts of men. So I'm going to stop right there for just a second because of the way this particular version is written is very gender specific. I want to make it absolutely clear that this is not the end all be all. I take men to mean women, gender non-binary folks, all types and stripes of queer folks, anyone and everyone that is human. So maybe a better word to use here is I give the joy, the, I give the gift of joy into the hearts of humans or peoples or, or something like that. This is understood, and I think this is is maybe the only piece of this particular version of the charge that I take a little bit of umbrage with. Um, and then she says, Up on earth I give the knowledge of the spirit eternal, and beyond death I give peace and freedom and reunion with those who have gone before. And so I think here this is re-emphasizing what I just said from the, the uh, previous paragraph about how... Um, or even the previous paragraphs, the goddess gives us knowledge. She gives us understanding of multiple lifetimes, of joy, of peace. I don't know about you, but it's very comforting to me to know that I have been here before and I will be here again. And that this life that I possess right now is but a part of a greater whole. It's still very important and still very valuable and valid and it's only part of a greater whole. Here she literally says, I give the knowledge of the spirit eternal. And as I have grown in witchcraft and in my walk in the craft, I have come to know in a deep-seated visceral way that I have been here before and I will be here again. And it's such a beautiful thing. 
And then she says she gives beyond death peace and freedom and reunions with those who have gone before. And so there's the promise that we are not walking this cycle alone, that those that we care about and resonate with on a spiritual level, we will not only see again in the world after this one, but in the lifetime after this one. And that's a beautiful thing to me as well. And then after all of that, she says, nor do I demand sacrifice. For behold, I am the mother of all living, and my love is poured upon the earth. So there's no sacrifice. She does not ask us to give anything up, but to just show up. <laughs> and she tells us that her love is unconditional, and her love is for all beings. And so what this tells me is that if her love is for all beings and all of creation, our love should be for all beings and all creations. And for me, this is a deeply meaningful case for preservation of the natural environment, for doing something about climate change, for doing everything I can personally to help the earth and protect it and stand to put my body into the fight and to, to do what I can to stand against those who would destroy the natural world. That's plants, animals, the very earth itself. It also tells us that those beings are beings, that animals, plants are living things that have their own spirit and their own nature and their own right to exist just as we do. And to me, that's also very powerful. And the goddess further affirms this to us. She says, I who am the green earth and the white moon, the mystery of the waters and the desire of the spirit, call unto your soul, arise and come unto me. So, She's literally telling us she is the earth, she is the moon, and to harm those things, to harm the earth, to harm its creatures is to harm her. And so for me, this is a mandate in our practice as, as witches that, that we have to care for our earth and that we have to care for our environment. And then she goes on, she's also to be found in the mysteries of the waters and the desire of the spirit. So again, there's that word mysteries, that experiential thing, um, that experiential experience. Um, to me, this literally means that experience of all the elements is important in the craft. Um, stepping into water helps you to understand water and its mysteries. And I mean water with a capital W, the element water, the elemental of water. Same with fire, though I'm not suggesting you step into fire, but being around a campfire and gazing into the flames, feeling its heat, having an experience of fire like that, or earth or air, all of those things are available to us. They're all mysteries in the sense that they are better understood stood through experience instead of through knowledge in the head, if that makes sense. Um, and then it says she's also the desire of the spirit. And she goes on to say, I who am the green earth, etc., the desire of the spirit, call unto your soul, arise and come unto me. So this one is also pretty powerful. She is that call within our hearts, that still small voice that calls us out to be and do and grow, that calls us out to dance in the moonlight, that calls us out to search out witchcraft and understanding and growth and knowledge and self-development. That spark inside that draws us forward is literally the voice of the goddess challenging us to step onto the path of growth and evolution. And then she says, let my worship be within the heart. This one's critical. For behold, all acts of love are my rituals. All acts of love are her rituals. So to me, when I found this phrase growing up as a gay boy in the South, I felt so validated about knowing that the love I felt in my heart for another man was validated and approved by her instead of the way I was raised, which was with shame and condemnation and sin. And that is such a powerful transitional experience. So whoever you are, whoever you love, there's no judgment here. 
from the goddess or from me. And that is such a beautiful and powerful thing. So like I said, or like she says, let my worship be within the heart for behold, all acts of love are my rituals. Therefore, let there be beauty and strength, power and compassion, honor and humility, mirth and reverence within you. So to me, this next phrase is all about balance. It says, let there be beauty and strength. Let there be power and compassion. Let there be honor and humility, mirth and reverence. So this tells me that all of these are appropriate in ritual, especially the mirth and the reverence. I don't know how many times in ritual something unplanned has happened or something that was planned didn't go right. And all you can do is just laugh it off. And that's a beautiful thing. One thing I love about this practice is you can be solemn when it's appropriate and you can laugh when it's appropriate. And both those things are perfectly acceptable spiritual responses to the craft. Um, be beautiful and be strong. Be powerful, but be compassionate. Be honorable, but be humble. So very important. I don't think there's any need to break those down any further, pretty clear. And then, and you who think to seek for me, know thy seeking will avail thee not unless thou knowest the mystery. If that which thou seek, thou find not within thee, thou will never find it without thee. Profound, profound words. Literally telling us that whatever we seek or desire cannot be found outside of us, that we have to find it within of us. And this is probably the hardest uh, challenge that the goddess puts towards us. I haven't been able to do it fully. I feel like that's the worth, uh, work of lifetimes, of a lifetime and of lifetimes. So let me break this one down into clear modern English. And you who wish to seek for me, know your seeking will not do you any good unless you know the mystery. If what you are seeking you can't find within yourself, you will never find it outside of yourself. Powerful words. And it's a challenge to honor and realize that the most important thing we can do to change our circumstances and, and, change, our, and change our world is to do the work internally to change ourselves. Can't say it any simpler than that. Witchcraft has so many tools to do that. And then finally, for behold, I have been with ye from the beginning, and I am that which is attained at the end of desire. So speaks the goddess. So she tells us she's always been here, and she is at what we will attain at the end of all of our work. For she is that which burns within us, which lives within us. She is the spirit within us. She is the universe within us. And really what we're seeking is ourselves. The whole time we're seeking ourselves. We are the goddess and she is us and she is within us and so more to be. And so there you have it. That's a quick run rundown of the chart of the goddess. Um, I could probably spend three hours on each paragraph of this trying to break it down and understand and figure out fully what it means and still never get there. And I feel like that that in itself is a work of a lifetime. And it was a pleasure to share it with you. I'm going to leave some PDF copies of this below so that you can look at my particular pages in my Book of Shadows and my particular version of the Charge of the Goddess. And you can find your own online. I would recommend exploring. There are many different versions of the Charge, like I said, and there are charges to specific gods and goddesses. Uh, so just search and see what comes up and resonates with you. And please comment, like. I would love to discuss this. Like Ryan said earlier, you can find me on Patreon and I have a Discord server that I would love to get some things going on. And I appreciate your support. I appreciate you watching, commenting, liking, doing whatever else you can to support me. And I love doing these videos and I appreciate and love you all. Have a wonderful weekend and blessed be. Mwah.